Gary here with MacMost. Let's take a look at using vocal shortcuts. So vocal shortcuts is a new feature in macOS Sequoia and iOS and iPadOS 18. It basically allows you to speak a command. You don't have to say any magic word like Siri beforehand or anything like that. You can set up these commands to trigger shortcuts or a Siri phrase. Let's start on the Mac. Of course you need macOS Sequoia to do this and then you want to go to System Settings and then Accessibility. Then you want to scroll down near the bottom you'll see a whole section just for vocal shortcuts. You go in here and then there's a Setup button. So we're going to set this up. It's going to give us a little information here. We'll continue and then we get this list of things that we could do. Most of this is a list of your own shortcuts. So things that you've already set up in the Shortcuts app. You'll see one other item at the top here. We'll get to that in a minute. But let's choose one of these. I've got a shortcut called Add to Note. In the Shortcuts app it's right here. And what it basically does is it gets the clipboard. It gets the text from the clipboard since the clipboard can contain things like rich text and other things. And then it's going to append that text to a note I've created called Quick Add from Clipboard. Here's that note. You can see it's empty right now. We'll move it off to the side. Now I'm going to use this as the action for the vocal shortcut and click Continue. Now I want to enter the command. So I just need to type what it is I'm going to say. So I'm just going to say Add this to Notes. And then I'm going to Continue. And when I do it's going to ask me to say this exact phrase three times. And then it's going to use that to recognize when I say the phrase. Add this to Notes. Add this to Notes. Add this to Notes. So it didn't have any problem with that and it says Action is ready. I'll continue. It gives you this screen here where you can continue or cancel with this. And you could see it listed here. You can click on the I button there and that's how you would delete it. And now it's ready to go. I don't need to have system settings open or anything. I now can go to some other place. Let's go to a web page and let's copy some text here. So I'm going to copy this sentence and then after I do that I will try this out. Add this to Notes. You can see you got that indication there that it recognized the vocal shortcut and then it did it. It did what the shortcut was. It's really no different than triggering the shortcut from here but the idea is you can do it completely hands free. This is useful if you have trouble using the mouse or keyboard but it could also be useful as just a great way to trigger shortcuts without having to go up here or remember the keyboard shortcut you're set or something like that. By the way, if you find these videos valuable consider joining the more than 2,000 others that support MacMost at Patreon. You get exclusive content, course discounts and more. Read about it right here. Let's add another one. So I'm going to go through the steps again and this time I'm going to choose Grab the Screen. So in Shortcuts it's going to take a full screen screenshot and you can see here under Show More I've got it just for the main display. Then it's going to save the screenshot to the folder called Screenshots. And then if I look under Show More it's going to create a subpath with the word Screenshot and a space and then the current date. And you can customize the date format here. And I've done so to make it look kind of similar to how the native screenshot functionality saves files. But I could choose something else which is one of the things that makes this useful. Notice also I put a wait 3 seconds at the beginning of this shortcut. So let's set this up. I've got Grab the Screen, Continue and I'm going to use the same phrase. Grab the Screen. And then I'm going to say it three times. Grab the screen. Grab the screen. Grab the screen. OK. So I should have that one here now as well. I'm going to bring up the Finder and here's that Screenshots folder that I've used and you can see there's already one in there. Let's give this a try. Grab the screen. And you can see it delayed that three seconds and it took this screenshot. And you can see why it delayed the three seconds is because there's that big window open saying that the vocal shortcut was recognized. I don't want to grab that so I had to wait three seconds. I probably could have done two seconds and it would have worked just as well. One thing about this is you definitely need to pause before you start the phrase. If you add it on to the end of something it doesn't seem to recognize it. Like if right now I say grab the screen it doesn't do it. But if I pause, grab the screen. then it will work. Now when you go to add an action here 
you get your list of shortcuts here, but also you get other things as well. At the bottom, you get accessibility, and there are a whole bunch of different accessibility actions that you could add. So for instance, you could add invert colors or turning on or off live captions or one of these other accessibility functions. So that could be useful as well. Also at the very top you get Siri request. However, I haven't found this to work in macOS Sequoia yet. If you use it, it starts off and it asks you for a phrase. So the idea here is something that you would normally ask Siri. It could be a long phrase if you want or it could be something short. I can just type weather and if I press return, it doesn't seem to work on any account or Mac I try it on. So let's switch over to the iPhone now. So in the iPhone you would set a vocal shortcuts in the settings app and then go to accessibility and then scroll down and it's in basically the same place. Vocal shortcuts right there. You've got an on off switch for it and you can add an action here. And notice when you do so it's the same steps. You've got all of the shortcuts here that you can add. At the bottom you've got some system things. So this is more than what you have on the Mac. Like for instance you could have the flashlight turned on or off or mute or screenshot, things like that. And you've got accessibility as well. And at the top here you've got Siri request. All the rest of this works just like it does on the Mac. So let's try Siri request which does seem to work very well in iOS 18. If I use this I can type a request. So let's just do something simple here. So maybe if you have friends or you do business in London you're always asking this. So you can use this as the Siri request and then the next thing is the phrase and then add that in and then you have to say it three times. London time, London time, London time. And now it's ready. Continue and you can see it's added. Now we can give it a try. London time. And there we go. We get that. It's not that much harder to ask Siri to do it but imagine of course doing a much more complex Siri request or shortcut and having your iPhone do it just by speaking that phrase. So give Siri request a try on your Mac in Sequoia. Let me know if it works for you. If not we'll just have to wait for a fix for that. And of course until then you can really do anything that you would do with a Siri request in a shortcut anyway. So you can just set up the shortcuts that you need and then use vocal shortcuts to trigger them. Even if it's something you could already use Siri for, you don't have to trigger it to bring it up. You just say that phrase and it will do it. Here's a fun one. Here's a two line JavaScript program that will basically simulate the return key. And I've called this press return. So I'm with vocal shortcuts. I'm going to add an action and I'm going to have it choose this particular shortcut there and I'm going to call it make it so. And then I have to speak it three times. Make it so. Make it so. Make it so. And there we go. Now if you're wondering what this will do, imagine I've got a dialog box. Like for instance I'm going to save something for the first time. So I decide where it's going to be saved. Let's save this to my documents folder. Instead of pressing the save button I can simply press return on the keyboard. But I have a way to do that with a vocal shortcut now. Make it so. There you go. It works. So now you can confirm any dialog box by issuing that phrase instead. Hope you found this useful. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.